Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. This is going to be our regular tithes for our congregation. Um, so if you'd like an offering envelope, please raise your hand. If you are part of an army of love, feel free to give. Feel free not to give. Do whatever you want. God's so good, isn't he? Who the Lord sets free is free indeed. You're free to do whatever you want. Amen. Concerning giving, everything else, be ethical and moral. Proverbs 3, 8, in the Amplified, it says, Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labor and with the first fruits of all your income. Say, that's my part. Verse 10 says, so shall your storage places be filled with plenty, and your vat shall be overflowing with new wine. Say, that's his part. That's God's part. Amen. You do your part. Let God do God's part. Because the world tells you to go out and get, try to save, try to store up, right? That's what the world's trying to do. But from a spiritual standpoint, from a scriptural standpoint, if we would just honor the Lord. Bring the tithes into the storehouse that there's meat in his house. Amen. God is so good. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. Don't worry about trying to fill yourself up. Let God fill you up. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. Lord, we honor you with our tithe, Lord. We bring that tithe in. We're so grateful, Father, that you are our provider. We're so grateful that you are the all-sufficient one, that you are the, the God of more than enough. And we thank you, Father, that regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the economy, regardless of the workforce, God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God of more than enough, and you pour out blessings, that there's not room enough to receive it. Now, we rebuke the devourer. In Jesus' name, the devil can't touch our stuff. The devil can't touch our finances. We declare increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It wasn't working a minute ago. Or maybe I was. I don't know. God is so good. God is. Do I really need this? Do I really need this? Yes. <laughs> Father God in Jesus name he's such a blessing Kevin God is so good isn't he Amen. thank you Father God in the name of Jesus Father we just give you praise glory and honor we thank you Father God for your presence here in our midst Father God we are so grateful so honored Father God we just worship you and adore you Father in Jesus mighty name you're such a good and mighty God we thank you for your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God forevermore. Whew. Well, the anointing's already really strong up here. So if I fall over, don't blame me. But m maybe you can join me on the ground. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, God is so good. Uh, well, I'm not kidding about the presence of God. I'm, I'm kidding about falling. Well, no, I'm not either. It's, I was sitting. Never mind. God, God is good, isn't he? Uh, have you come to receive? Yes. Okay. okay. There's not much enthusiasm here. A little bit more. Have you come to receive? Yes. Uh, okay. Because if you want something from God, you got to let it be known. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I've come to receive, glory be to God. Anyways, uh, you know, when the anointing shows up, you want to preach and teach. Because, I'm, you know, I'm a minister. <laughs> Do you guys know how that feels? Anyways. I'm not going to preach and teach. God is good. Thank you all for coming. We are so excited today yeah. because Pastor Ike is with us. Yes. And last time he came, he started a fire in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
that lasted for weeks. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we're just believing God uh, that, uh, uh, and we're going to be pulling on that anointing yes. so we can all receive whatever it is you need. Yes. Believe God you can receive it this morning. Amen. Whether it's healing, whether it's finances, whether it's uh, repairing relationships, you believe God and God will show himself out in your life. Yes. God is so good. Yes. Well, that's all I got to say. Yes. Pastor Ike, <laughs> come on up, brother. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Thank you. Praise God. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Let me see your happy faces. Come on. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What an honor to be with you. Amen. I love your pastor. He's a very special man. Amen. And of course, it's wonderful to be among you. I was here. How many of you were here the last time? I would say, wow, good, good, good. Praise God. We had a wonderful time. And uh, I endeavor to never come alone. Because you don't want me. You want the one that I come with. (laughs) Amen. I came with the Spirit of God. Amen. And I want to thank Pastor for taking good care of me. Amen. It's been wonderful. Had good meal last night, ready to go. Praise God, got some time with, uh, all right, let me just get into one. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. And my wife and kids, they send their love. They really enjoyed being here the last time they were here. My kids had a lot of fun, and so did my wife. They send their love. Everybody's doing well. They've already had their service, so now it's my turn, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Well, how many of you know that God, when he invites us to come together, he has something good to share. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I want to recognize the Arrayers, Pastor Eduardo and Pastor Blanca. Amen. Amen. Precious friends. Amen. Amen. We're glad they're here. We're going to have, I I like this system. We can have fun all day long. From fire to fire. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Amen. I was checking my heart as to what to minister to you. Usually, when I come over to the States, my wife and I, as you know, we pastor in Nigeria. And um, whenever I get ready to come over to the States, there are certain places that will stir up in my heart to come. Because, you know, there are many places you want to go. There are many places you can go. But I've endeavored to just go to the places where God put on my heart to go. Amen. And this place is one of them. Amen. So I'm glad to be here. I, I trust you brought your faith to receive all that God has for you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I, in checking my heart on what, what to minister to you, the Lord reminded me of a message he gave me. I started preaching this in Nigeria. And he said to preach it to you guys. So we're going to preach it this morning, preach it this afternoon. I, don't, I can't guarantee you that it will be all the same, but God knows where you are, and he will bring you uh, the message that will lift you. Amen? Amen? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of standing before your precious people today. Father, without you, I can do nothing. I look to you to manifest yourself to the people. Grant us utterance to speak as of the oracles of God. Father, make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer to write this precious word in the hearts of your precious people today. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that your word will have free course among us. Your word will be glorified and lives will be changed for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How many of you remember that in the Bible it tells us that God will increase us more and more. Increases of God. How many of you would like some, something better this year? Amen. Amen. It's okay to want something better. The wonderful thing about increasing is that God already told us that he will increase us. He will increase us more and more. Not just us. Us and our, us and our children. But you know... To receive the increase, you're going to have to mix it with faith. 
we have the privilege as children of God to determine what happens in our life every day. You can go as high as you desire this year. Amen. 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 Why? Because God gave us the privilege. God gave us the honor to determine that. You see, that's what righteousness made you. Righteousness made you the determining factor of what happens in your life. Are you listening? Because God made you the righteousness of God in Christ. You remember 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him to be sin who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be returned to the position of reigning in life. That we might be returned to the position of determining or deciding what happens in our lives. If you look at Genesis from the beginning, God created us and he said, let them have dominion. Let you determine what happens. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Uh, If you're going to subdue something, that means something tries to get out of order. So we have the liberty, we have the, the authority to bring things into order. So righteousness introduced you back to your dominion in Christ. Okay? So that righteousness authors you or offers you the life of increase. Life of increase. We're supposed to go from glory to glory, from increase to increase. So if we're not increasing, then something is missing. Amen. If we're not increasing, something is missing. It could be that we're not applying our righteousness. It it could be that we don't understand our responsibilities. You know, being in Africa, I've met people over the years that are praying, waiting for God to come do something. This year, God will do something in my life. This year, God will do something in my life. And that's the prayer of many. And God will often say to me, tell them, what is it that they want done this year? Because if they don't decide, heaven has nothing to back them up with. So it matters what you decide concerning 2024. Amen. It matters. It's not just up to God. It's you. Amen. So we're going to talk briefly this morning about faith for more. Faith for more. Because, you see, the life that God planned for you is already a very well-made life. You notice I don't have to flip through a lot of of, uh, scriptures today. I can just quote it because your pastor is a wonderful teacher. You know, you you know a lot of these scriptures. Amen. Amen. So, the life that God planned for you is already a put-together life. Put together life. Already made. Already made. Say already made. Already made. made. That's the part that so many Christians don't get. When you came into the kingdom of God, you came into an already made life. Okay? Because to be born again means to be restored to the kind of life that God designed for you. God put in Christ, God built in Christ the man that he wanted you to be. And he took you and he put you inside of him. Okay? But in order to live the kind of life that God intended for you to be or God designed for you to live, it is lived by faith. It can only be lived by faith. The new creation life is faith-operated. Faith-operated. Like, you know, you have different machineries. Some use fuel. Some use diesel. You can use fuel for a machinery that calls for diesel. Right? Right? If you try to use it, it won't work. You see, the reason or one of the reasons people struggle is because they're trying to reach what God has for them uh, from a different operation. You see, living and increasing is easy. 
easy. Say easy. easy. You know, somebody say life is so hard. Which life are you talking about? Are you talking about the general life or the life that you have? Because the life that you have is the life in Christ. And it's different from life in general. So when you say, or you hear people say life is hard, it's a struggle, you have to ask yourself, which life are they referring to? Because if you're not careful, you find yourself talking just like them, thinking that you have the same life. The life we have is the life in Christ. But that life will only show in our lives as we operate by faith. Is faith operated? All right. Remember Romans chapter 1 in verse 16 through 17. It said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Here we go. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Huh? And then he goes on to say in verse 17, he said, for therein, where? In the gospel. Huh? Is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So it takes faith to see huh? what God has prepared for you. It takes faith to see who you are. Well, number one, if you don't see who you are, what's prepared for you will be very elusive. Because you're not an ordinary person. Uh, I know I'm preaching two sermons, three, four, at one time. Uh, just follow me, right? You're not an ordinary person. If I walked in here and said, how many ordinary people do we have today? <laughs> how many ordinary people do we have? People, and somebody will say, well, what do you mean by, you know how we are, we get technical. How, what do you mean by ordinary? Do you mean, no, I just mean the question is the question. How many ordinary people do we have? How many supernatural beings do we have? Because you're a supernatural being, it calls for faith to operate it. Amen. Amen. So, as we get to know the word by revelation, we get to grow from faith to faith. We go up. Amen. Your life's already settled. Your life's already prepared. That's one of the things that has been a tremendous blessing in my life. Knowing that God has already prepared things. I don't have to struggle to prepare them. My job is to believe him to enter into it. That's how you get into the more. By faith. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of things uh, hoped for, right? And the evidence of things not seen. See, I like working with evidence. Evidence. That's the stress-free life. Because if you have the evidence, you don't waste your time. Amen. Hmm? If you don't have the evidence, you try to see, ah, let me see if this will work, or let me see if that will work. Let me see where well, they said this will work, where well, she said this will work, he said that will work. Yeah. No, don't waste your time. Yeah. Yeah. Operate based on evidence. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Remember in Ephesians 2, in verse 10, in Amplified Classic, it says, you know, for ye are God's own handiwork. Yes. His workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew. And it tells you why. That you may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for you. Who who predestined it? Who planned it? Okay. Planned beforehand for you. Taking paths which God, which God, Prepared for you ahead of time. And what will be the result? Living the good life. Living the good life. 
So your life is already sorted out. Because I hear people every year, oh, pastor, I'm trying to sort my life out. I'm trying to sort my, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort my life out. No, that's a different life. That's a life out, out that's a life outside of Christ. Amen. And that's not you. Amen. Bible say we, our life, we are hid with Christ. So if you want to find out the kind of life that God designed for you is in Christ. And that life is well prepared. And that life includes 2024. Amen. Amen. He sees ahead and he prepares. Right? But to get into it, you're going to have to operate by faith. And like you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? And to operate by faith, you know, uh, uh, you hear and you see. Uh, you hear and you see. You hear and you see. Are you, are, are you, are you with me? Amen. You hear and you see. When you don't hear, you don't see. Amen. And when you don't see, you stumble. Oh. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's why it's important that you walk by faith. To come into this more in 24. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I'm going to talk to you. This is just, I'm just looking for a landing strip. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. You see, you're not looking for, you're not looking to manufacture your life. Amen. It's already in place. Remember, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not evil. Plans of good and not evil. Right? Amen. You've heard faith so many times. So let me just get right into some of the things that will affect your faith for more. Because sometimes people think they are in faith and they are not in faith. And some, sometimes we think we're in faith, but our faith is not fully engaged. So just because of time, let's just go over some things. That will help us maintain faith so that we can come into more that's already available to all of us. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Because we determine. You remember in Matthew chapter uh, 9 in verse 27, the blind man, the two blind men that followed Jesus, crying, saying, you know, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Huh? And when they came into the house, you know, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. Believe me. Do you believe that uh, that, that I'm able to do this? And they said unto him, Lord, yes. And Jesus touched their eyes and said unto them, According to your faith, be it unto you. We learn something big. According to your faith, be it unto you. So you decide God's involvement. Okay? Amen. You decide God's involvement in your life. Okay? So one of the things that will affect your faith when it comes to more. Number one is not being in the plan of God. Remember, faith can only be used for what God planned. Hmm? Remember, faith is not to convince God. Faith is to come into what God has provided. And in order to come into what God has provided, you have to be in his plan. Amen. Are you following? Amen. You know, so not being in the plan of God will affect your ability to believe for what God has for you. Amen. 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 Remember in Jeremiah 29, 11, we quoted it, for I know the plan that I have for you, plan of good. What about if you're not in that plan? You see, you can use faith for your own system. 
Are you listening? You use faith for what God has provided. You know how we have our vernaculars, you know? We're using our faith, you know, and we think we're trying to muscle through something. Faith is not a struggle. Faith is you believing what God has said. Faith is believing what God has done. Because what God has said reveals what God has done. Are you following? So the big key to your faith walking is knowing that you are in the plan of God. Because if you're not in the plan of God, then you are outside of the, outside of the territory where your faith right. is supposed to be walking. Yeah. Amen. We also quoted that Ephesians 2 in verse 10. You know, let's read it. So you, because sometimes, you know, we quote it and we think, uh, is it there? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Oh, somebody said, man, Pastor Ike, if you ever preach the message and you never go to Ephesians chapter 10, I might be looking for Jesus. Because <laughs> it's a favorite uh, scripture of mine. It says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined Planned beforehand for us. Amen. Taking paths. Which he prepared ahead of time. But if you're not taking those paths. You will struggle with your faith. Amen. Are you here? Amen. What does it say? Taking paths which God prepared. Not the one you prepared. Many times we come up with so many things. And we go to God and say God. Sign here. God, I came up with this fancy idea. It should work. Sign here. You see? For your faith to work for more, you have to be in the paths that God has prepared for you. Because he prepares the life. You do the receiving. Are you here? Because when you do that, all the struggles will quit. All the struggle. No struggle. No struggle. Are you here? So, get in the plan of God. Amen. What's another thing that will affect your, your faith for more? Not knowing the truth. How about not knowing enough truth? Amen. Amen. Bible says you shall know the truth, right? And the truth shall make you free. God operates according to truth. Faith operates according to truth. So if you don't know the truth or don't know enough truth, your faith doesn't have enough fuel to reach its destination. Are you here? You see, God works according to the truth. So when you are deficient in truth, you will by default become deficient in your exploits of faith. Amen. Are you following? Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. The word of God is the truth. Jesus said, sanctify them by that word, that word is truth. Right? Amen. Amen. The less you know, the more the devil has advantage over you. Amen. Amen. Because you see, the devil walks through ignorance. Amen. Hmm? Hardship, difficulties find their home in ignorance. So when you get rid of ignorance... They have no home. Hardship will have no home around you. Difficulties will have no home around you. They may hover for a little bit, but because there's no place to stay, they will take off. Amen. Why? Because you know. Because you know. Amen. You see, without knowing, you won't be able to prepare for what God has for you. 
Are you here? Without knowing, you won't be able to prepare for what God has for you. That's why we teach people all the time, get knowledge. Get knowledge. Forget about the trouble. Forget about the difficulties. Get knowledge. Because the cure for difficulties is knowledge. Why? Because when you get knowledge, faith comes. Amen. And when faith comes, this is the victory Amen. that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. Are you here? So without knowing, you wouldn't be able to prepare for what God has for you. Why? You see, any preparation you made, somebody's rash is going away, praise God. Amen. The rash has been there for a while, it's going away. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. You see, where were we? <laughs> Glory to God. Any preparation that you make without proper knowledge, without the truth, hmm? Without the truth, is subject to corruption. Amen. Have you ever seen people? They prepare for the new year. They have all their list written out, you know. This is going to be a great year, you know. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. You know. What are you basing it on? Well, the economy is going to improve. I'm going to get a better job. I'm going to, you know, be, you know. What are you basing that preparation on? Because if it's not based on the truth, uh, which is the word of God, it is open to corruption. It is subject to corruption. You remember in 2 Peter chapter 1, in verse 4, it says, whereby are given unto us, uh, where in verse 3 it says, according as his divine power has given. Oh, each time I read that scripture, we do something on the inside. Has given. Has given. I said, has given. Amen. Not going to. Has given. Has given. What did he give? He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. He has given. He has given it. He has given it. Amen. Are you here? He, he has given it. He has given it. Amen. Not going to. He has given it. And I will often stop and ask people. Can you tell me some of the things that pertain to life? Does money pertain to life? They say, uh-huh. Houses? Uh-huh. Clothing? Uh-huh. Wisdom, uh huh. He said he has given it. Amen. He has? That's what he said. He said he has given it. Amen. But how did he give it? He gave it through. He gave it through knowledge. Yes. Yes. He gave it through knowledge. When you know, you come in contact with what has been given. Yes. He has given it. I said he has given it. Amen. Okay, so how did he do it? it? And then he goes on to tell us in verse 4, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great. It exceeds anything. It's greater than anything. And precious, because you can't find it any other place. Amen. Precious promises that by these, by these promises, you might be partakers of divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So when you get a hold of knowledge, you have the opportunity to build with something that cannot be corrupted. Amen. See, it's not about getting money. I've seen people make a lot of money. But the devil comes one way, throws something, and all the money psh, wipes out. They made money. Have you ever looked at your... <laughs> balance book and notice wait a minute I made a lot of money where did it go right where did it go huh? something that will help us to think towards these things is to know okay what am I operating with am I operating with knowledge from God's word because that's what keeps my preparations my endeavors out of corruption. Amen. Remember, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. Amen. 
So get to know the plan of God, get to know the truth. Amen. I see, many times people pray for opportunities. We're praying for opportunity. I was preaching this at my church in recent time. You know, many times people are calling, God, I'm believing you for opportunities. God said to me, tell them, don't pray for me for opportunities. Prepare for opportunities. Amen. Because opportunities come all the time. Opportunities come all the time. But the problem is that people are not prepared. Remember, Oral Robert used to say that every day, miracles are either coming to you or passing you by. How can a miracle come to you and pass you by if you're not prepared for for the miracle? Amen. Remember, your life has been prepared. The increase that God said belongs to you has been put together. Amen. Somebody say, how do you know? He said it. He said, I will increase you more and more. That means when it is spoken, it is done. As far as God is concerned, you see, anything God speaks to you exists. Your increase for 2024 exists. It already exists. That's the only way you can reach it by faith. If it doesn't exist, you can't use your faith for it. Right? Right? It exists. How do you know that it exists? Because the word said so. Amen. That's why in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, faith, 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 which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things you don't see. Amen. Just because you don't see it does not mean that it doesn't exist. Amen. That's why it's important to always follow the evidence. Are you here? Follow the evidence. So many times people are looking for opportunities when they lack preparation. So for 2024, what should you focus? Preparation. How do you prepare? Prepare with the truth. Prepare with the truth. Amen. Why? Because you see, it matters what you know. Hmm? Because what you know determines what you prepare for. Are you here? There are people that only know, ah, I I can only get another $1,000 this year. And that's all they know. And that's all they will prepare for. But if you know according to the word that there's no limit as to what you can get, you set the limit. Remember Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith. That means according to the knowledge you possess. Because there's no such thing as faith without possessing knowledge that comes from God. Amen. Amen. That's what produces faith. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Another thing that will help your faith, so we've talked about so far, the plan of God, right? Knowing. Knowing. Having proper knowledge of God's word. Okay. What is something else that will help your faith for more this year? Hearing God. Amen. Hearing God. If a man can hear God, he can do the impossible. <laughs> Somebody say, I don't know what I'm going to do. My life looks like a mess. I don't know. I don't know, Pastor. I don't know, Pastor. I said, just get to hearing, my friend. Because if you can hear, huh? if you can hear, your life can change. Why? Because you, you, you see, God delivers things to you through hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Through hearing. Remember, faith comes by, you possess by faith. So we could say it this way, that possession comes by hearing. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Faith is the victory. So we could put it this way, that victory comes by hearing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I put it this way, that hearing God is the greatest opportunity that belongs to a man. Hearing God. Hearing God. Why did Jesus look different to everybody? He said, I only do what I hear my father and what I see my father do. See, hearing has multi-function. <laughs> you hear, 
and you see. That's why in Habakkuk 2 it tells us, he says, I will stand upon my watch huh? to see what he will say to me. You would thought he should say to hear what he will say to me. But he said that I may see what he will say to me. So you see by hearing. Amen. Revelation comes by hearing. When I say, hey, I came in a car. What am I saying? I'm giving you a picture. You're not seeing a bike. When I say car, what do you see? Uh, some, something with four wheels on it, right? <laughs> right? You're not seeing, I didn't come with a horse. Right? I say car. So the word of God gives you a picture of what already exists. That's why when you hear, you see. Get yourself in position to hear. Amen. Many times we don't hear because we're too busy. We're so distracted. We're so noisy. Are you here? In order to hear, you're going to have to get yourself in a quiet place where God, when you can hear God talk to you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I have this saying. <laughs> uh, I'll repeat it to you since it's, it's in my note here. An unending opportunities. Opportunities that never end. Uh, awaits a man. Who will make what he hear God, what he heard God say, his business? Amen. Endless opportunities. Amen. Awaits a man who will make what he heard God say to him Amen. his business. Amen. Somebody said, "What are you in business for?" I'm in business for hearing God. Yes. Yes. That's my business. Amen. What do you do for a living? I hear God for a living. Right? What do you do for a living? I hear God for a living. Remember the Bible said the just shall live by faith. You can't live by faith without hearing. Amen. Right? So it's important. It's important. Yesterday's hearing is not sufficient for today's victory. Amen. Because it's easy to hear something and memorize it. Huh? And you think you got it. Because it's in your memory. It has to be alive. Yes. Amen. It has to be fresh. Amen. And for it to be fresh, it has to be now. Yeah. Amen. So you have to hear that sound again. Yes. You don't try to remember it. You look at it. To hear it again. Am I making sense to you? Huh? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Praise God. So, make sure you're hearing. Something else that will affect your faith for more in 2024 is uh, not being fully persuaded. Not being fully. So, you know, you can say, I'm in faith. You know, persuasion, the Bible says, the Bible talks about fully persuaded. So if there's fully, then they, they must be half, three quarts, yeah. uh, <laughs> one fourth. Yeah. Uh, many times, just because there is a level of persuasion does not mean that we are ready to lay hold of more. Amen. There has to be full persuasion. Full persuasion. Say fully persuaded. Amen. Amen. Remember in Romans chapter 4 in verse 20 through 21, it talks about Abraham that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded Amen. that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You see? So when I talk about being fully persuaded, what am I talking about? I'm talking about avoiding gaps in your believing. 
You believe for a while, and then you drop. And then you try to pick it up again, and then you, you know, it drops. So that's what I call gaps in your believing. That's what affects you being fully persuaded. Amen. Amen. Avoiding gaps in your believing. You believe for a while, and then you doubt for a while. <laughs> Huh? You believe for a while, you know, on Sunday, man, oh my word, they preached. Ah, oh, I got the word, I got the word, I got the word. Two weeks later, how's it going? Yeah. Well, well, and then they start to refer back to past experiences. That's called gap in your believing. Amen. Dropping the ball. Huh? What do you need to do? Hold on to the ball. Uh, catching it is not the main thing. Hold on to it till you get to the end zone. Amen. Amen. I mean, can you imagine being on a team and you're the quarterback and you threw the ball to the receiver? He he caught the ball all right and he starts celebrating. He's just ooh, ooh, ooh. he said, "Boy, run it to the end zone." <laughs> Take the ball to the end zone. He's going, no, 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 no. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. You see, would you score? No. no. The point of catching the ball is so you can take it to the end zone. Are you here? The point of believing is so you can bring your faith to the successful conclusion. So you can behold the product. So don't just catch the ball. Hold on to it and go all the way in. So don't just get persuaded. Get fully, fully persuaded. Amen. Amen. Fully persuaded. That means don't have any gaps in your believing. Hold fast to it. How do you do this? By holding your attention on that word, which is that ball, right? Hold your attention to it. Hold your attention to it. If you don't see the word in your attention, it means your persuasion has been compromised. Amen. Are you here? Yes. So, you keep it in your attention. Hold fast to it. Hold fast to it. Keep it before you. And I say, well, it seems like work. Okay, well, what do you, you want to have or not have? Right? <laughs> so, you hold it before you. You hold it before you. You hold it before you. Hold it before you. Hold it before you. Why? You maintain eye contact. Yes. Amen. That's how you become fully persuaded. You can't just look at the word for two minutes and then look at problems, doubts for the rest of the time. Hmm? I tell people, faith is, is not just to fix your problem. Faith is how we live. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, somebody said, I'm fully persuaded. And I said, if you're fully persuaded, let me see your action. Because when you are fully persuaded, there will always be an act of faith Amen. found in you. You're not just sitting there and saying, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. <laughs> I'm fully persuaded. No, just like that guy that caught the ball, right? I caught the ball. I caught the ball. I caught the ball. It's not about catching the ball. Run the ball into the end zone, right? It's not just be being fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. Give it an act. Give it action. Give it action. Remember, Smith Wiggles was used to say that faith is an act. Faith is an act. You can't tell me you're fully persuaded if there's no action. Amen. Action. Action. Amen. Action. Yeah. Say action. action. I say say action. action. Say action. action. Say it like it uh, at, until it dawns inside of you. Action. action. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> action. 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 Amen. Do you know that God meets actions of our faith with his power? Yeah. 
Remember the Bible tells us in Ephesians. Apostle Paul praying that, I, that, that God will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That we may know the hope of his calling. That we may know the riches of the glory of his inheritance amongst the saints. That we may know the exceeding greatness of his power. That is in and directed toward us. What is that power waiting to do? Huh? To get to supply the actions of our faith. So where there's no faith action, we won't see the power of God. Even though that very power is sitting on the inside. I don't know about you, but I like power visible. <laughs> Amen. Are you here? I don't like weak stuff. I like power. And if you got power, it must be showing. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's not enough to say, I got the power. I got the power. What is it doing? Well, I'm waiting for the power to do something. No, the power doesn't do anything without it being assigned. And it is our actions of faith that assigns the power. We are power brokers. We determine what the power of God will do. Why? Because we, by faith... Engage the power. And that power is on your side. To bring into manifestation. Everything that God already planned for you. Planned for you. That power was sent on a mission. What kind of power is it? Resurrection power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was preaching an Easter service one time. And I said to the people, you know, we're celebrating uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And people said, yeah! I said, you know, that's not true. <laughs> They're like, hmm. You hear this moment of silence. I said, it's not true. So, you know, sometimes you got to say some things to just get, get people's attention. I say it's not true. It's not, it's not the resurrection of Jesus. I said, We've never heard this before. So what is it, Pastor? I said it's the resurrection of Jesus and us. Amen. Because there couldn't be resurrection of Jesus without our own resurrection. Amen. Because the only reason he went down there was because of us. Amen. And the Bible says we were raised together. Yes. We were raised together. We were raised together. So it's not just celebration of the resurrection of Christ. It's our resurrection. Me and Jesus. You and Jesus. We were resurrected together. And that power that did that huh, is inside of you. Waiting to bring into manifestation your every act of faith. Glory! <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. Glory a Dios. <laughs> si, Señor. <laughs> Smile. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I've seen, I've seen ministering spirits, angels in services. You know, we don't make a highlight of them all the time. In services, they walk around. People go, oh, they're too sad to receive. They, they look in church, in church, in church, in church. Why? You see, your jo- the expression on your face, the joy on your face. Is the indicator hmm, of your faith. Amen. 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 Glory to God. What is something else? (laughs) What is something else that will help you hmm, in coming into more, in your faith for more? Have an expectation. Let me say, but that's faith. Yeah, be be specific. 
What exactly are you expecting? Amen. Well, I'm expecting that God's going to be good to me. That's, that's a given. Yeah. Amen. What exactly? What exactly are you expecting? Because that's the only time your faith is engaged. Faith is only engaged when you are specific. Amen. Are you here? Yes. Faith has to be specific. So for you to be in position for more, you have to be specific in your expectation. Yes. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? What are you expecting? Write it all out. Write it all out. What are you expecting? Write it all out. Amen. Write it all out. Show God these are the things I'm expecting. Hallelujah. Well, you know, and I just want a little. Well, if you want a little, that's what you're going to get. But at least be specific. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody had a business last time. You've been struggling with getting it started. And um, the last couple of years has been disappointing. But you, every now and then you see light, you pursue it, uh, and it doesn't really pan out completely. If you're here, stand to your feet. That's who I saw. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak. To all those things come into order. Yes. In fact, come up here. Come into order, I say in Jesus' name. It changes from today. It'll be different. It'll be different. So be it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You too. In the name in the ah uh, okay okay you gotta learn to be bold bold you you settle too quick okay well I just try next time no say no I refuse say no I refuse open now in Jesus name what about you sir yeah same same thing same thing same same thing same thing same thing same thing same thing you keep looking back this way. You walk a little. You keep looking back this way. You keep looking back this way. Don't look back. If you look back, you stay back. Stop looking back. Just look forward. Make the adjustments and keep your face forward. Look forward. Don't look. You're not a victim. Hmm? You're not a victim. So stop going like this. this way. And each time you go like this, it's like, ah, man. Come alive in Jesus' name. Doors open right now. Yeah. Where's your husband? Come to. Mm -hmm. Smart, 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 smart. I hear. Smart, 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 smart. It's very smart, very smart. But receive wisdom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Amen. Now, don't take that out of my time. <laughs> I have the right, I reserve the right to yield to the Spirit anytime. Anytime. Because that's why you're here. To receive from the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? Yeah, I just get thrilled. Like to see God in action. Amen. Praise God. It will be so. It would change so fast. You'd be like, "Wow, this is amazing." Yep. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So be specific. Enlarge your tent. Yeah. Mm? Enlarge your tent. Don't enlarge it according to what you can do. Enlarge it according to what He said. Did I tell you guys the story of buying some chairs for the church in Nigeria? <laughs> we finally got this building that we're in, and I went to get chairs. And in Nigeria, I see a lot of people use the plastic white chairs, you know? It's cheap, 
didn't get plenty of it. So I proceeded, and I was just going to get them. And God said, don't you, don't you dare. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, let me go up a little more. Because, you know, because I'm thinking, those, those chairs, you know, you get them, you fill the whole place. So I went for another one, an upgrade. <laughs> and when I looked at that one, it was decent. But he said no. And I went until I found one. The one that he said yes to, one piece will buy me 10 or 15 of the white ones. I said, Lord, do you realize? Hmm? <laughs> huh? <laughs> that one of these, with just one chair. Do you know what he said to me? Are you paying for it? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I learned something. He said, he will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So stop looking to you. Enlarge based on what he said. Enlarge. So ever since then, I don't care. I don't look at the prices. I just listen to hear. You see, what you're hearing is your, is your checkbook. Mm? Mm? <laughs> because if you can hear, you can spend. Your hearing is your spending capability. Because what you hear is in your pocket. <laughs> Woo, glory, glory, glory. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, what's another thing? Somebody's back has been out of order. Where are you? Back. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that back. Turn and come into order. Turn and come into order in Jesus' name. Mother, come. There's more. Come. Come. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's not just the back. It's not just the back. There are other things. I see that angel with me. Thank you, Father. He's organizing. Mm. Even sugar levels, even, yeah, so many things. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, organizing that. Yeah, restructure, redo that. Be whole in Jesus' name completely. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. What is something else that will help you? See, this happens, this is God confirming his word. We just, yeah. I just obey as it comes. Yeah. What is something else that will help you with your faith to reach for more? Hmm? Prayer. Being watchful. See, your place of seeing is in praying. <laughs> Mrs. Newsom made this comment years ago. He said that the price, let, let me see how she said it again. He said, watchfulness is the price of constant victory. And you watch and pray. You watch in prayer. Amen. Remember 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, huh? because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Something in your intestine is being healed too, mother. Something that has to do with her intestines. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. So, watch and pray. Remember in Colossians 4, 2, it says continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Hmm? 
and watching the same. When we don't pray, we don't see. When we don't pray, we don't see. He who prays, sees. And when you see, <laughs> no matter what the natural looks like, the vision of what it looks like, he already has. What will cause a group of people, construction workers, to keep laying brick after brick after brick after brick until Something is built from a hole to look like a massive thing. You know what caused them to do that? The blueprint they saw. And they're looking at. When you pray, that's when, where you see the blueprint of what's available. Remember Jeremiah 33? 3? He says, call on to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amplified Classic says, you know, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Fence thing. That means they exist. Right? First thing, hidden, uh, not hidden from you, but hidden for you. Oh, I love food hidden for me. <laughs> I remember when we were little, we used to go to grandma's house. Thank God for grandmothers. We go to grandma's house, grandma would start pulling some things from some places. That you knew not existed. <laughs> yeah. She pulled it out. I was holding this for you. I said, ah, thank you. I was holding this for you. Yeah, thank you. When you pray, you get to behold things that ordinary people don't see. Amen. Yes. Call on to me and I will answer you and I'll show you. Many of us are good at calling. But not very many are good hmm, at seeing. Amen. Why? Because many times many make prayer about their need yeah. instead of, of praying to know what God knows Amen. and to see what God sees. And to some of us, we only pray when we have need. And that limits our vision. Amen. And when you don't see, it affects the distance you travel. Amen. How many of you have heard about visibility? You know, if you fly a plane, they tell you where the visibility is. Or even driving, and there's fog and stuff, you can't see. And you, you notice you don't go fast. And notice sometimes you clear. And notice sometimes you wait. But you see, when you pray, you ascend to a place where all things are visible. Where you can see clearly. And when you see clearly, it does something to your step. Amen. Hmm? Your steps become bolder. Even if things say no, you deny no. Amen. Because you've seen. Hmm? Because you've seen. See, the more we pray, we, the more we become people of prayer. Amen. The more we refuse to allow things to continue. Amen. If it's not according to what we've seen. Amen. But if you didn't see, you'd be okay with things. That's why, you know, spending time with God in prayer allows you to see possibilities. Amen. And when you see possibilities, you will take the stamp of the word of God and stamp out every impossibility out of your life. 
When things say impossible, it says who? Pow! Out. <laughs> when I don't think it's going to work, say it's who? Pow! Out. Hmm? Why? Because of what you've seen. Because of what you've seen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Woo. You see, and part of praying is praying in the spirit. The Bible said that when we pray in an unknown tongue, we speak mysteries. Hmm? When we pray in the spirit, we take exit out of natural man's living. We take exit from a life of guessing. We ascend to a place of knowing. When we pray in an unknown tongue, the Bible says, we speak forth mysteries. You look at many people. You look at people. Most struggles are because of what people don't know. Many give up at the sight of unknown. I just don't know. I just don't know. And they quit. But God has provided us a platform to ascend into our place of knowing. Because when you speak in an unknown tongue, you are operating in the know. Things are no longer mystery. One of the great infirmities of human beings is the infirmity of not knowing. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is, in the, is on the inside of us to help us with that infirmity. Yes. According Amen. to Romans chapter 8. Huh? So I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Oh, Sharia, Badi, the Labra, Bashe, the Gordon, the Masikiri, Eskaya. Disappear. Into your place of knowing. And that becomes a daring fellowship time with God. Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, the defense of the Almighty. And then it begins to affect your speech. It will say of the Lord. You see, you will sound like where you dwell. And what you sound like attracts things to you. Hmm? Hallelujah. Oh, my word. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. See, to make prayer wonderful, see, I've already like, oh my gosh, oh Jesus, help me, help me, help me. To make prayer wonderful, you're going to have to learn to go into prayer with joy. Amen. Carry joy with you. Amen. Hmm? I mean, if you, you know, when we were little, when, when our parents travel and they come back, you say, what did you bring for me? What did you bring for me? What did you bring for me? Did, did you bring bread? Did you bring bread? Oh, did you bring tortilla? I like tortilla. Yeah. Did you, bring, <laughs> you know, uh -uh. flour, flour, flour. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And they bring stuff. You're like, ooh, yeah. You see, God rejoices in our fellowship. Amen. So when we show up, God is like, what did you bring me? What you bring me? What you bring for me? What you? You see, so many times we think, what can we offer God? Is God now? No, He's our Father. He longs to see us, and He longs to see us bring Him something. The coolest thing about it is that He's not asking you to bring Him something that He didn't already gave you. He gave you joy. So he said, when you come, bring joy. Bring joy. Don't come with sad face. Bring joy. Have you ever entered into prayer? Oh, God. God, 
I need you right now. I need you right now. He said, wait, 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 wait. Where'd you get that from? Huh? Don't act like stranger, right? A stranger doesn't know what belongs to him. So he comes all walked up. But when you know, because you know the word, what belongs to you, you come. Father, and he said, yes. You know I love you. <laughs> you are the best of the besties. <laughs> mm? I thank you for saving me. Not only did you save me, your presence is ever with me. I just love you, Father. I thank you that you've made me more than conqueror. I thank you for your word, for they are lamp unto my feet and the light to my path. There is none like you. I bless you. I'm so thankful that you saved me. Look, I mean, I'm in perfect fellowship with you. Glory to God. Now, Father, and he goes, okay, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. And before you start talking about what the need is, he begins to show you what he already planned. Because he said, I will answer you before you call. There's always a supply before the need arises. Amen. What keeps us from seeing it huh, is when we're not walking in the spirit. Amen. When we're occupied with the affairs of the flesh. Glory to God. Are you interested in real estate? Stand to your feet. Come. God, give him those keys in Jesus' name. Give him those keys. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> It'll be easy. Yes. One after the other. In Jesus name. Praise God. Glory. Amen. Glory to God. So. Carry joy to prayer. <laughs> Amen. Carry joy to prayer. First, First Thessalonians 5. Verse 16 says, rejoice evermore, rejoice evermore, rejoice evermore, pray without season. People want to jump to pray without season, but do the first one. Rejoice evermore, pray without season. If you skip the first one, then you are not in order. Right? Rejoice evermore, pray without season. Does your Bible say the same? First Thessalonians 5.16. Check, check. I want to make sure. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. I want somebody to read it to me so I make sure you have it. Y yes, yes. Uh-huh. So it's in the Bible. Yep. It's in your Bible. Yep. So now you've heard it. Right? So before you start praying, make sure you go. <laughs> because without that, then you're not serious Amen. about praying. Right, right. Amen. Can, I, can I show you something? Sometimes we're too religious. You know what I mean by re religious? Your face doesn't impress God. God doesn't answer your prayer because you're like, mm, but. <laughs> no, no. Are you here? Amen. In fact, God works because you, you see, your joy is the representation or the expression of your faith. Amen. I mean, if you have dogs, 
Hmm? If you put out a treat before the dog, right? Right? right. He's going to get something. He's all excited, right? What do you do in prayer? Your prayer is your getting place. That's where you get things. So when you approach, woo Right? I'm going to get something. I've come to receive. But if you come any other way, it's like, come on, you don't understand the whole thing. Amen. Right? Yeah. Rejoice. Bring joy to prayer. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And that dog will do anything you tell him to do as soon as he cites those treats. treats. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? You tell him, see. Okay. See. See. Okay. see. <laughs> huh? What? See. That tree. See, your prayer closet should be your place of tree. Amen. 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 Show God your excitement. Show God your excitement. I said, show God your excitement. I said, show God your excitement. I said, show God your excitement. Uh, Amen. Praise God. That's how you're coming to more. Amen. It's not all of it, but at least. <laughs> That's how you come into yes. more. Amen. 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 What, what, what are we saying? God has wonderful things prepared for you yes. in 2024. Amen. How do you access them? By faith. Yes. But faith is not just, okay, I believe I receive. There are things that affect the activities of your faith. And one of them is being in the plan of God. Yes. Make sure you're in the plan of God. Yes. Are you where God said for you to be? There are people that are supposed to be here. But they come and they go. And that's why struggle continues. Amen. You see, it's not you making your life function. God is the one making your life function. Amen. Amen. So are you where God said for you to be? Are you doing what he told you to do? Well, I don't think this will make money. Is <laughs> You're missing the point. It's not money that makes you. Is the blessing yep, yep, that makes you. Yep, yep. Amen. Amen. Yep. You can learn how to manage money, but if you don't know how to manage the blessing, your money is no good. Amen. Because what brings increase is the blessing. Yep, yep. Amen. Amen. What else did we say? Knowledge, right? Yep. We, we talked about knowledge. Ignorance is the platform for difficulties. So you want to get rid of ignorance? You want to get rid of difficulties? Get knowledge. Amen. Amen. God walks by knowledge. And the less, you see, the less you know, the more the devil will mess with you. And the more you know, the more you know, okay, I can't mess with this. Mm -mm. They they know now. Uh, So let's go find somebody else that doesn't know. Hmm? And who you hang around affects what you know. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Praise God. What else did we say? I don't want to repreach it. Hmm? Fully persuasion. Amen. Fully persuaded. Hearing, right? Faith for more. What else? Watching in prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Having an expectation. Be specific. Hmm? Hmm? If you want a house, what kind? Hmm? How many of you have gone to restaurants and said, just give me whatever you got? <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? Yeah, you have to be specific. Decide it. Amen. Decide it. Decide it. Decide it. Decide it. Decide it. Amen. Decide it. Glory to God. Decide it. Decide it. Decide it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to those broken homes. <coughs> Satan, take your hands off their minds. Amen. And I loose ministering spirits to go. Influence them. Influence them to come into order. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Anybody else like hands laid on them for healing? I'm done. I promise God I will make that available as 
He leads me. Because ma many times as we're ministering, we're, we're calling out healings by word of knowledge. But it's not limited to that. I want to make sure I give people opportunity that would like hands laid on them. Let's do it very quickly. Anybody? You would like hands laid on you for healing? Praise God. Just come up. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Is Kevin the only one? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. What would you need healing for, Kevin? Okay. Be whole in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. God's going to do that thing you're believing him for. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. It's like at the door right there. It's coming. Praise God. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Because, you know, I say things by the Spirit that I have no clue naturally. But glory! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Well, we got another service coming up, so let me uh, put a caboose on it right here, and then we'll continue. We, we encourage you to join us for the next one. It'll be good. Amen. It'd be good. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> I, co I come to services to find out what will happen. <laughs> Woo! Glory! Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. can't hear me. There we go. Glory be to God. God is so good, isn't he? Hallelujah. How many of you guys received something this morning? How many of you needed help and you're like, I got my answer? How many didn't need help and you didn't need any answers? Well, the humble ones of us, we received. Amen. God is good. <laughs> God is good. We are, we are going to take up an offering this morning. Uh, go ahead and uh, mute Pastor Ike's mic. God is so good. And then just make sure only green's unmuted. Uh, this offering will go solely to Pastor Ike. But if you would, please make it out to, if you're writing a check, uh, RCF. So we can collect everything and then just give him one check instead of having to send him back to Nigeria with 27 different checks. I mean, <laughs> that may sound funny, but it's not when you go to the bank. Amen. Let me encourage you. Proverbs 11.24 says, It is possible to give away and become richer. It is also possible to hold on too tightly and to lose everything. Yes, the liberal man shall be rich by watering others. He waters himself. The way you get lack out of your life is you kick it in the teeth with some seed. Amen. If you like an offering envelope, raise your hand. Lack can't stand increase. And the way that you get increase in your life is you put seed in the ground. And the seed can only produce. That seed, when it goes in the ground, you guys remember in kindergarten, the little paper cup, and you put the seed in there, and first the roots go down, and then the plant comes. Okay, only I went to kindergarten. First the roots go down, and then the plant comes. The word's up. All right, maybe it's because I grew up in Farmville, Indiana. <laughs> so we understand seed time and harvest. So let me encourage your faith. When there's lack in your life, what you need is increase. When you don't have enough, what you need is more money. The way you get more money is you get the money that's in your hand to increase. The way that you get the money in your hand to increase is you put it in the ground. Pastor Ike is good ground. Amen. If you've received this morning from a spiritual standpoint, it's, it's, only, uh, it's only proper 
that you would sow seed into the ground. Amen. It's only proper that you would take finances and give your finances into his life to be a blessing. That's how giving and receiving works. You know, we, we lived our life in lack and we've lived in abundance. And abundance is a lot better. Amen. The people who say, well, I just want to be poor, they can be poor. But let me tell you, you can't bless people unless you're blessed. You can't help increase others unless you have increase working in your life. Amen. And when you, when you increase, it's better to give than to receive. And the only way that you can give, the only way that you can increase is if you have increase coming in your life. So one of the things that the Holy Ghost was speaking to me as I was sitting here is like 2024 is the year of more. More, more, more. 2024 is the year of more. You've got to be as good of a reaper as you are a sower. How many of you guys have sown and sown and sown and sown and sown? You've got harvest out there in the field ready to be called in. You have harvest out there with your name on it that's ready to come in. Call it in. Call it in. Let 2024 say, this is the year of more and more and more. We serve a, a, a too much God. There's nothing that you could ever ask him for that he can't provide for. It's not just about your need. It's about what do you want. It's about what are those things that you desire. Like give God something to be able to move in your life and be a testimony. I like how Brother Ike said, be specific. Like write it down. Amen. Write down. What is that thing? Because if you don't write down a goal, if you don't write down a vision, if you don't write down something specific, like I want this, then how do you ever know if you're just like, God bless me? Well, then how do you know that you're blessed, right? Like what is the specific thing that you're going to believe God for? And then let God be God. Let God show up. Let God be big. Let God be good. Let God be generous. Let him be a good father. Amen. Amen. If my kids come to me and they're like, dad, just bless me. I'm like, okay, bless you. <laughs> Right? But if they come and they're like, I want this specific thing in this color, and I want it to be this size, and I want it to, now I've got something to go to work and yeah. get for them. Yeah. Give God something specific. Yeah. Right? Amen. He's not going to leave you embarrassed. Right? Because he is a good God. Yeah. And then don't gap your faith. I like that. Don't gap your faith. Yeah. Don't be coming in here all built up and strong, and then on Monday you're like, where'd your... Don't let, don't let the circumstances take the wind out of your faith. Amen. Just keep soaring, amen? Keep pushing on those circumstances and keep seed in the ground and keep calling in your harvest, amen? amen. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God, that your word goes out to accomplish and do everything that it's set forth to do. Now, God, concerning our seed, I thank you, Father God, that this seed that's sown will produce for us 30, 60, 100-fold return. I call in a 100-fold return on this seed, God. God, I thank you, Father, for the faith that works. I thank you for the faith that's unfeigned. I thank you for faith that's pure, that's righteous, that's holy, God. God, we come to you, Father, as as your sons, as your daughters. We come to you because you are a good father. We come to you because you are a good provider. We come to you because you are able to provide for us in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now, God, we call in the harvest, all of the harvest that we've left out in the field. God, we speak to that harvest. We tell that harvest to come in now in Jesus' name. We declare an abundance. We declare more than enough. We declare a full supply and God, we give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Well, if you're here, I will look forward to seeing you at 2 o'clock at Army of Love. Amen. Let, make sure uh, we show up there, our church, make sure we show up there and that we, uh, we, we come. Raise your hand if you're from Army of Love. All right, Redeemed Christian Fellowship, look around. Look at how many people came and supported our church. Amen. So you don't have anything going on at 2 o'clock. I already checked all your schedules, <laughs> and they said, open, <laughs> nothing scheduled. So uh, if you need address, instructions, find somebody who knows where it's at, and, uh, and let's, let's show up, amen, 2 o'clock, let's, let's show up to be a blessing to their church, show up to pull on that anointing that's on, on uh, Pastor Ike, amen. amen. And God bless you guys, let's stand up, turn and, and uh, tell your neighbor, it was good this morning, good. you guys be blessed.
Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here.